This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hi, I'm Richard Gershon, the host of In Legal Terms and a professor at the University of Mississippi School of Law. If you miss a live In Legal Terms episode, find our podcast, inlegalterms.mpbonline.org. From MPB Think Radio, this is Money Talks. I'm Jermaine Flood, filling in for Kevin Farrell today, along with Dr. Nancy Lotridge anderson president of New Perspectives and Ryder Taft, portfolio manager at New Perspectives. Nancy and Ryder are both chartered financial analysts, and Ryder also holds the Certificate in Investment Performance Measurement from the CFA Institute. On Money Talks, we answer your personal finance questions. Today, we'll also talk about slashing from your budget, what the website go back Bankingrates.com calls useless expenses. Contact us by email. The address is money at mpbonline.org. To start the show each week, as Kevin would grandly do, we talk about financial news in the news. Hello, Ryder. Hello, Nancy. I'm sure both of you all. Good Good morning. morning. I am glad to be here to talk about things that I don't do, which is Uh keep good finances. Well, this is good. We have we have the examples and the counter example. We're going to have a good, a vigorous back and forth. Right. Before we get in the news, Ryder, I just want you to know there is a little Ryder always in my head when I'm out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he's about maybe a half inch tall and he's in my brain. And when I think about this morning, literally, I was like, oh, do I want coffee? And then I thought Ryder wouldn't buy a cup of coffee. Ryder was at oh, the no. coffee shop beforehand. <laughs> You, Jermaine, you should have joined me at the coffee shop. We would have had, we would have had a good time and we would have chatted about these things. I feel, I kind of, I'm getting the picture of the kind of the angel and the devil on your shoulder here. And and I'm, I'm not sure which one I am here. If I'm not letting you have coffee in the morning. (laughs) Oh, I'm scared, Nancy. I feel like Ryder, you and Ryder are like the principal and the vice principal of money. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm not Sue no. Orman here. Yes. Like, come on, you can live your life. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm I'm on the the chopping block right oh, now. No. no, no, we don't want to be that. We want to be the cheerleader. Yes, good, yes. Good. yes. I want you to live a good life, but also <laughs> have good finances. And I believe you can do both. And I believe all of our listeners can too. I really do, Ryder. I really. Do. It's like literally I'm out there going, no, Ryder wouldn't do that. So Ryder Ryder wants you to be happy, Jermaine. (laughs) Remember that. Keep that in mind. Ryder, what you got in the news today? What you got? Wow. Besides my shocking persona here. uh, (laughs) So last week, actually, like almost directly after our show last uh, last week, we had we had uh, tornadoes and and high winds Mm. and thunderstorms storms come through and and so I know we often do kind of a disaster preparedness yeah. thing in hurricane season uh, but natural disasters can happen kind mm-hmm. of any time especially mm-hmm. when we're talking tornadoes uh, here in Mississippi so preparation is what's going to keep this from being disastrous to your finances, mm-hmm. right? So uh, if you're a homeowner, you probably have homeowner's insurance. You have probably have auto insurance. Make sure, always good to make sure you, you know, probably should know this off the top of your head, what your sort of deductibles are. So if you know, okay, I have a $1,000 deductible on my car insurance. I have a thousand, two thousand, five thousand on my homeowner's insurance and know how much. So that gives you an idea of how much cash in an emergency situation you mm-hmm. might need. That's that's part of one of those things we add into there. So mm-hmm. having cash to meet those deductible, but also other non-covered expenses. It's not free to live if you have a car or a house destroyed. You're going to need money for that, too. Right. Um, we often talk about knowing where your documents are, your important documents, where those are stored, knowing who to contact, uh, emergency contact numbers. And one thing thing I always think is so, so important is knowing your network of resources. Mm -hmm. So who are, who are people out of town and whenever, during hurricane season, I always have friends from New Orleans calling and saying, Hey, if this is really bad and we have to evacuate, can I come stay with you? I'm two and a half hours up the road. Absolutely. Yes. Um, who can you stay with out of town? Who is available to help you clean up? This is super important. We've got a lot of, um, 
senior citizens living on their own, mm-hmm. who can they rely on? Who can they call to help out with things? Uh, who has that deep freezer in your neighborhood with a lot of extra food when you <laughs> when your own freezer runs or out? Or a lot of extra space right? when yours goes out. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, so kind of, it's not that every single person needs their generator and their solar panels and their chainsaw mm-hmm. and their in their pickup truck, but you need to know who has those things so that you know in that in that emergency situation if you do need those you know who you can call on yeah so natural disasters that is an important thing to be able to be prepared for dr nancy what do you have that's going on in the news well spring doesn't just bring tornadoes it's a great time for home maintenance i thought you were going to say pollen (laughs) no not just that Uh, but i spent a lot of time this past week talking to someone who was having serious plumbing issues And, um, you know, your home is an investment. It's one of your assets, Mm -hmm. and you want to maintain it. And often some of those issues are lumpy Mm. issues with a huge plumbing problem. You need a new AC unit because the summer is coming on in Mississippi. You need a new roof. Um, Those are things you should not delay because if you do, then that asset could deteriorate. So it's very important that you maintain that. And for most people, if you've been in your house for a while, you've seen the value go up. You've built up some equity in the house. So it's really important that you take care of that. And hopefully, as Ryder mentioned, with storms, you want to have some emergency cash to cover things. But if you don't, then, you know, last resort would be looking at a home equity line of credit. Mm. We are seeing higher interest rates now, but don't delay some of that maintenance. This is an important part of your overall portfolio. For many people, when they're talking about diversity within their portfolio, real estate needs to be part of it. And for most people, that is their home. Yeah, that's right. I mean, between natural disasters and home maintenance, basically they kind of go hand in hand. And then just thinking about it down the road, preparation definitely will help keep your bottom line low, you know? So make sure you're getting prepared for all of these things. Ryder and Nancy, we want to talk about some of these useless expenses as well. I want to get into some of this because I am definitely the queen of useless expenses. Oh, no. no. What, what do you spend on uselessly? <laughs> you, what is it? Take your pen and paper out. Lego oh, no. sets. I'm just like Lego Kevin. Sets. I'm just like Kevin. Kevin loves Lego sets, and I love Lego sets, you too. You love Lego sets. Yes. I have no space to really put them somewhere, but I build them, and I find a space, and I keep buying them. But you love them. <laughs> yes. L-O-V-E. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, why... <laughs> Is it is it useless to have something that you love? I don't know, Ryder. That's is what love I useless? Feel that's what I, I ask. feel like. <laughs> that's my that's one of my guilty pleasures, Nancy. It's Lego sets. So well, I'm all for giving uh, to spending your money on things that give you joy. Okay, you know? absolutely. All and, right, Marie Kondo. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And um, economics is all about choices, Jermaine. Mm-hmm. So. Um, You only have so much in resources, so much Mm -hmm. money, and you have to choose how to spend it. So you should be spending it on the things that really do give you pleasure and joy and things you love. Um, But where you really want to wring out those uh, extra expenses are things that really don't do anything for you. Yeah. Right. So think about when you look around your house in your mind's eye or look at your last long shopping receipt, what are the things – that don't bring what are the things that's Mm -hmm. oh man i did not need that and it it could be any maybe maybe not just a a lego set that you didn't enjoy as quite as much as you want but maybe there was some other shopping that you didn't enjoy maybe maybe it was a meal you were just like you know i've really like that wasn't very good and i've had some leftovers in the fridge i had to throw out because i didn't you know so what are those things that would be those expenses that you can cut out because if you if you go through your budget and and you you assign a dollar value to your budget and mm-hmm. you cut some things out that's fine but then if you go through your budget and you sign a, some emotional value to it the emotional value mm. you receive the things that you love and if you go through and cut out all the things that you love is that like 
Am I living like, a happy you're, life? Your little <laughs> half inch rider standing on your shoulder. I, I do not. He is not advocating for that. This rider. He's advocating for you cutting out the things that you don't love. Yeah. You know, you because you want to maximize that enjoyment. You want to maximize, like Nancy said, the joy you have in your life and minimize the dollars. Right. And I think and what, I, no, go ahead. What about Nancy. the things that you don't use, for instance, a subscription that you don't use, mm. a magazine that comes to your mm-hmm. house that you never open, a streaming service that you've forgotten about. Um, a speeding ticket, which gives you no choice. Well, do, well, I don't know. Some some people like Money driving dangerously. I I hope people would calm down on these roads, but uh, some people do seem to enjoy that. Maybe that, so. A, a gym membership that you never use. That's what I was going to say. I am guilty, and the only reason is because I think I'm going to use it one day, and I'm, I just need it to just make me feel better. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but I have not gone. I am paying right now, right now, yeah. Nancy, and hadn't stepped in and probably I want to say 365. Yeah. Okay, so to look at that number, how, <laughs> how long has it been since you've gone? I know. How much are you paying and what could you have done with that money that would have been more useful? Right. Listen, I need somebody to relate with me right now. Please. Ryder and Nancy are going to answer my questions and your personal finance questions. You can send an email to money at mpbonline.org. We're going to jump into some more of these useless expenses. You're listening to Money Talks. Our website, moneytalks.mpbonline.org, is one way to hear past Money Talks broadcast. You can also download the MPB Public Media app and listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. I'm Jermaine Flood filling in for Kevin Farrell alongside Dr. Nancy Lotridge Anderson, president of New Perspectives and Ryder Taft, portfolio manager at New Perspectives. Nancy and Ryder are here to answer answer your and my personal finance questions. We're definitely answering yours. <laughs> Also today, we're talking about slashing from your budget what the website GoBankingRates.com calls useless expenses. Let's get back to some some useless expense talk. Um, Ryder and I were talking on the break, Nancy, about gifts. Um, I was telling Ryder, I am the uber gifter to the point where I literally buy gifts ahead of in advance, um, gifts and greeting cards, just in case I need something loaded into the shoot for something to give to someone. (laughs) I do. I do admire the planning ahead and the preparation for these things because right. Going and buying a handful of gift cards or greeting cards uh, ahead of time is probably a lot easier on the budget and also like less stressful and less time consuming than running out. Oh my goodness. It's, it's, it's Liz Gill's birthday tomorrow. Let's go. Let's no, go, Liz Gill's go. birthday is in my drawer right now because yeah, it's in it's, May. It's ready to go. It's in May. See, it's ready. See, she's ready. <laughs> she's got this thing figured out. Well, Jermaine, I would ask you, um, what what does what pleasure does that give you? What does that do for you when you give a gift? So this is this is something that I'm I'm wrestling with. So I, I heard this 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 guy who's online, Vince Staples talk about how he doesn't like to give gifts or receive gifts Mm -hmm. and it's because he feels like the gift is for the gifter Mm -hmm. and not the giftee Mm -hmm. and it's because the gifter wants to see the giftee accept the gift and have a reaction to the gift i don't know most of the time they want it to be positive and i get that for sure um and but for me yes that portion of it yeah um i also know that i've I've probably bought something that they would like and possibly they would feel joy out of receiving that um that's a good thing so it's it's for both me and them i guess and i'm not so so selfish like if if they didn't like it i would be like oh well you can take that back you know yeah that's not a good gift though is a gift budget because if this is something that's really important to you and you want to make sure you remember and acknowledge the people around you family and Mm -hmm. friends 
But if you had a budget, like a monthly budget, this is how much I can spend on gifts. And if you can track that one thing, you know, a lot of us are not good at overall budgeting. We're not tracking every single thing. But if this is the one thing where you kind of go overboard, Mm -hmm. then if you just track that and limit what you're doing every month, you can still be able to do those things and make those gifts but it's much more reasonable for you based on your overall budget. Yeah, and the time at at which I do it. So, you know, Liz's gift was bought this month, even though her birthday is next month. That's playing ahead again. (laughs) I mean... But I this, hope she's not listening right now. But right. Wait, yeah, why'd you get no? Right. Funny thing though, Ryder, you were talking about you know cards and mm-hmm. and you know just possibly going with just a greeting card and not doing a full gift. Um, but what I found funny online was there was this couple who had went into the store together, like let's just say into the greeting card store together, and they both went shopping for greeting cards for each other, and they found the one that they liked and they turned around. And they handed it to each other, and they read it, and they laughed and said thank you, and then they put the card back on the shelf and oh walked out the store. Grace, that is that's what we call a success story. <laughs> Sue's Orman would be retailer. so proud. I know, not for the retailer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so it's that's like going a way. to the bookstore and just like reading reading the magazine off the rack, <laughs> yes. and, and we're like, oh, that was, that was nice little. It was, nice it was kind of cute, though. It was kind of romantic. Mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> Very budget romantic, but yeah. So I don't know. What what else are some useless expenses, Ryder, that people spend on? Well, I, I think um, the, the, a lot of these uh, things we kind of have to talk about are kind of junk fees or, or that just things that really anybody can can avoid paying. And, and, and we talk a lot about aligning mm-hmm. your expenses with your values and something like banking fees and credit card interest mm-hmm. and, you know, things that have like an obvious coupon or discount to them. You know, sp- paying money on banking fees doesn't really align with anyone's values unless no. you just like, you know, the banking industry really needs my help. Needs my help. You, know, you know, call today for a dollar a day. You can support the banking industry. Um, I think they're going to be OK, actually. Um, but so your values will kind of tell you about the other mm-hmm. things you care about. Mm-hmm. So do you really care about your Legos? Do you really care about your gym membership? Not just like, oh, I might use that gym yeah. membership, but like going to the gym mm-hmm. is good for me and gives me pleasure. Like if you're just not going to do it, just don't do it. Like, yeah. like if you're not going to commit to doing it, commit to not doing right, it. Right, because literally you can go tomorrow and get your gym membership back. You absolutely can. Or you could just walk around the block tomorrow you know <laughs> there's right, right. you know there there's there's <laughs> options so but but for some people that more expensive gym or a gym membership at all is the thing they like and treasure and value and they're willing to cut out something else mm-hmm. in exchange uh so so that's maybe one way to think about it about how how to understand your own values especially with these smaller little things where we're like oh i could avoid this but i don't really feel like avoiding it is there something that you would spend that ten dollars on rather than this, or is this the best use of that ten or whatever yeah. the dollars are? Right, right. Nancy, how do you feel about it? Well, I think um, a lot of people tend to spend without thinking about it, and um, often, if it is an item, if you have the opportunity to just say, "Well, let me think about this overnight," mm-hmm. and go back the next day. So many times when I go back the next day, I think, gosh, that really doesn't do anything for me. I just thought that was just the thing I had to have yesterday, but maybe not so much. Maybe I went home and looked at my closet and realized I have three other black tops that Mm -hmm. look just like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, where I get into trouble, Jermaine, is when I travel because – when I travel is when I think, but I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I'm not going to be back <laughs> to this right. spot. Or, Nancy, mine is, it's the last one on the rack. Ooh. Ah, Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, that hurts you. The last one on the Yikes. rack will get you. So, yeah, I have that problem. Mm. I do. I do. And then another way, let me, I don't know if this is a good financial way to help combat some of this heavy shopping. So I have a tendency to, let's just say, go to the big box store pull out a big shopping cart, and I call it throw it in the cart, right? 
Mm. And I go through and I, I do um, what you, I guess you would call it like, you know, binge shopping real fast. Um, I want this. I want this. I'm like a little kid. I want it. I want it. I want it. So I throw it in the cart and I walk around with it in the cart. I kind of own it for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I haven't purchased it, uh-huh. but it's on. It's, what, it's what, in what my happens? possessions. It's next Uh-oh. to me. Um, so I walk around with it in the cart and eventually poor store. As I'm walking through it, I'm leaving things in random places. That's why that they do oh need goodness. to be. So you're you're the reason why I see things like butter in the in yes. the produce section. Yes, that just hurt my feelings, oh. Jermaine. And then look, when I'm I, gonna I'm gonna call into the radio every time I see this. I'm gonna be like, Jermaine, give me Jermaine. <laughs> right I've now. worked at a department store before. I've been oh, there. I've no. had to put all those things back. And so what'll end up happening? I still have a lot of stuff when I get up to the register. So when I get up, there's there's a vetting process at register. So you pick out the things that you want first, and you put them on the belt. And then the things that you don't want stay in the cart, and then at the end you go ah y'all can put that up if if i ever (laughs) if i ever am doing my grocery shopping and i say i see jermaine in the store i'm i'm simply gonna leave because i don't want to run the risk i end up in the line behind her let me tell you though good this is a good trick for children because when you get i've done this with with a child paying attention now i've done this with a child before you take a child in they're going to say, I want this, everything at their eyesight. I want it, I want it, I want it. And I'm game for it. I'm like, put it in the cart. Put it, we call it, put it in the cart. Put it in oh, the no. cart. Put it in the cart. And then once we get the cart full, I look at the child and I say, oh, we got a lot of stuff in this cart. I think we Put it to- on the shelf. Put it on the shelf. <laughs> it's two go, games in one. But look, I think I say, well, we got to pick out our favorite three things that we've got in this cart. And they'll pick the favorite thing. The three. We put the others back. We push around with those three. Then you get to the end and you say, ooh, we got to pick our favorite toy, the one that we really like. They pick that one, then you put the other two back. And then you've walked out with one thing that you've purchased for this child, and they've wanted 20 of them. Is that good, Nancy? I hope we don't get any calls on this. (laughs) So, Oh, golly. Uh, I can just see meltdowns at the cash register. No, it worked. It worked. I'm about to have a meltdown on this radio show, Nancy. What are you talking about? You can't do it just at register. You have to do it throughout the entire store. It just can't come down to register where you're doing it. So um, one (laughs) strategy here that I would like to share a personal story that's somewhat related is I, uh, one year for Lent, I gave up sugar. And um, so I just, you know, didn't, didn't eat sweets. I'm mm. like, that was great. And then and then the day after Lent, of course, I ate like f- five slices of cake and I felt awful. And I decided <laughs> maybe I should like go easy on sugar. Maybe I should go easy on sweets. So um, the way I consume less sugar and less sweets and less desserts is uh, simply not getting them in the first place, you know, not having yeah. that temptation. So if your problem is I'm always going to grab that last thing and go on the rack, I'm always going to have at least one thing that I didn't need coming out with me. Mm-hmm. Why not just not go? Yeah. Why not just stay? Just home. don't. I yeah. mean, there, there, this is America. There are a hundred thousand things you could do with your time. Yeah. You do not have to go to the store. And you, you don't you know, have to take your child with you. Right? <laughs> you don't. Have, you know there. There's just. There's just. If, if you. If you recognize that you are doing some, like we say, useless spending. If you look at your receipt, if you look at all the things you bought and you're like, you know, I I love these Legos that I got. Mm -hmm. I needed this milk, eggs, and bread that I got. But ugh, on this shirt, which is just like all the other ugh shirts shirts that were the last ones on the rack, well, maybe, maybe just limit the amount of time and number of times you go to the store, go in there with a lit. We're big fans of going in with a list. Um, there are just ways you can kind of, kind of put another, put another barrier in between you and whatever that bad habit is. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Well, I love it. Nancy and Ryder are here to answer those personal finance questions. This is Money Talks on MPB Think Radio. Money Talks is MPB Think Radio's personal finance broadcast. I'm Jermaine Flood filling in for Kevin Farrell, along with Dr. Nancy Lotridge Anderson, president of New Perspectives, and Ryder Taft, portfolio manager at New Perspectives. Nancy and Ryder are both chartered financial analysts, and Ryder also holds a certificate in investment performance measurement from the CFA Institute. If you'd like to order a little rider for yourself, it's about a half inch tall. (laughs) 
Both Nancy and Ryder are ready to answer your personal finance questions as well. But we're talking about slashing some needless expenses from your budget. Nancy, what are maybe another one of those useless expenses? Well, we've already mentioned some of those credit card fees, but watch out for late fees. Any kind of late fee is just mm-hmm. like, you know, money that's spent for nothing. Mm-hmm. And that means you need to stay organized with your bill paying. And, of course, late fees can end up hurting your credit record. So that's another reason to pay attention to those. But those late fees can add up 25 I've even seen some of them at $50 a, a whack. That's a lot that you could have spent on something else that you would have gotten a lot of pleasure out of. Right. You're right. And then possibly maybe a way around that is doing like, what is that, the bank draft? That way you're always right. on time? Right. Okay. Right. And you can even, with your uh, bank accounts mm. now, on a credit cards because those amounts fluctuate, but you can still set up for automatic payments that run with those cards so you don't ever miss those yeah yeah that's a good that's a good tip Ryder you've got another one yeah so and 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 I like um thinking about how all of these little expenses can add up (laughs) but a, a kind of a broader thing to think about that sometimes encompasses a lot of these is is what does your lifestyle look like you know, do you do you uh, live far away from your work, and so are you spending a lot of money on gas? And then, mm-hmm. and of course, we can't just every day change where we live or, or change right. our jobs or things like that. But uh, <clears throat> the way we approach our budget will change at different points in our life, at different ages. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you're a young person, think about where am I going to live? Well, think about what are the resources you want to be near. What you know, what. What's your favorite grocery store? Right. Where do you like going out? Where do your friends live? And you want to be close to those, uh, but of course you don't want to live in a too expensive area, yeah. uh, things like that. All of those lifestyle decisions. Am I a person who eats out a lot? Do I stay in and watch Netflix? Am I really into mm-hmm. my Legos? Mm-hmm. Those sort of decisions will end up you know, coloring a whole lot of your smaller expenses mm-hmm. as well. So think about those. Again, you know, I think about how your values dictate your spending and how your value you know how your spending aligns with your values but also how does your lifestyle align with all those how is your lifestyle leading to more expenses or less expenses right and in kind of that same vein of lifestyle i was thinking you know sometimes you can get wrapped up in keeping up with the joneses oh absolutely and you're not the joneses you're just a smith exactly and that's why it's important to say what is your lifestyle right what what are the things that are important to you yes it's important to your neighbor that he has landscapers coming Mm -hmm. twice a week and you know, you know, with little scissors trimming every single blade of grass. And I'm not saying just <laughs> let your yard, you know, just fall apart, but ugh, please don't drive by my house. Um, but, but there are just, there are ways to have a lower maintenance lawn. There are ways that you can take care of a lot of that yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, take up gardening and landscaping as a hobby. Grow a clover lawn, for instance. Um, have a lower maintenance lawn. Things like that. You don't have to be just like somebody else who may have different values. Right. Who may have a different lifestyle than and you. And we have a lot of research about uh, money and happiness. Does money buy happiness? And what we it buys Legos, that- and Legos make us happy. <laughs> Legos. You better get you a good set. <laughs> but uh, most of the time, we are happier when we spend for experiences. Mm-hmm. So whether it's um, having a nice meal somewhere, taking a trip, and we're happier when those experiences involve other people, our yeah. friends and family, that we then create memories with what we've spent money on. So that means when we go into the store and buy this stuff, it probably doesn't make us happy. And I'm starting to reach that point in dealing with um, aging parents and clearing out mm-hmm. houses full of stuff Mm -hmm. and thinking about how much stuff that accumulates and starting to think about, well, what do I want my legacy to be? When I'm no longer here, do I just want it to be a whole pile of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about that because I saw online, you know, people make fun of their grandmother's kitchen. And because it's always some old stuff that's, you know, expired in 99 in the cabinet. But my grandmother would always tell me, go in there. There's something in there and you'd look and it would be expired. And she'd say, no, it's good. 
I, I think they were trying to save money. <laughs> I think our grandparents were actually trying to save, and that's why they've got cabinets full of stuff, you know, <laughs> when you go in there later. <laughs> I might I might need that later, or yeah. somebody else is going to like if 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 you're, you know, and again, that's why the question is, does this bring me joy? Mm-hmm. Not, do I think this is going to bring my grandchildren joy I, you can't answer that question mm-hmm. for them i mean mm-hmm. you can't and if they say no you just go ahead and let that go right so i think joy too is maybe something that could be defined so is is joy a full feeling of happiness or is joy a quick fleeting feeling of happiness so then well, you have to determine what really makes you feel joy you know well i we try to encourage people to feel joyful when they open up their 401k <laughs> statement <laughs> because, um, you know, delaying that gratification means that you can save. And that's what we preach about saving. Mm-hmm. Yes, you want to spend on things that you enjoy now, but don't lose sight of what the future lifestyle that you want to have mm-hmm. and what is that going to look like and how do you not spend on things now so that you can save and store up and be ready for that right 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 well one thing i think gives people joy like you were saying nancy is going out and having experiences with people but sometimes you can have too many like attending too many weddings is that yes. uh, that's mm. a useless expense right how do you feel about that writer well I, I I mean wedding weddings are a lot of fun, but obviously we're talking about the, when you have to travel, stay in a hotel. Those things add yeah. up so quickly. And I and I was last week I, I went to a conference and I, I was surprised at how uh, expensive the flight not a particular <laughs> not a particularly exotic destination the flight yeah. the the hotel how much that ended up costing me and then of course like you've mentioned there even though the the, the wedding may take care of a lot of your you, know, you you have your food you have your mm-hmm. entertainment there but you're still going to want breakfast you're still going to yeah. want lunch you're still probably going to run out and go shopping because you left something at home so so there are a lot of expenses there mm-hmm. and so it's a, it's kind of don't think oh does this person bring me joy but is this is this wedding something that's going to be important to me? Is it going to be important years from now for me to share these pictures and share these stories about how I attended this person's wedding? Yeah. Or is it not? I think in, in, in that case. What if they get divorced? <laughs> so with every wedding, just just flip a coin, flip a coin, you know? <laughs> That's another thing, too. You know, with weddings, when it comes down to, let's just say you're the bridesmaid, sometimes you got to buy your own bridesmaid's mm-hmm. dress. And are you the bridesmaid, the favorite, you know, bridesmaid? Or are you just a are, fill-in? Are you one of 16? Right. Are you a there, fill-in? Right. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, I don't want to diminish anyone else's joy, right? Like, if you are actually somebody's best friend and they care, but, you know, you don't want to be like, oh, I'm just going to be a jerk and, like, not... Yeah. not play a role in your wedding that right. is is really important to you. Yeah. I, I would try to be a better friend than that. But but again, you know, there's there are just so many that are oh, this is maybe I'm a plus one that doesn't really even need to come. Mm-hmm. I'm not actually are you excited mm-hmm. about going to this wedding? Mm-hmm. Are you looking forward to going to this wedding? Are you looking forward to being just a, a part of this couple's life? Right. Uh and if and if you're not you don't have to go. Right. You don't have to go. Right. Well, the, the number, if you want to get in on this convo, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's one 672 7464 Nancy, talk about dining out. That's a big one that I think everybody deals with on a daily basis. Well, you know, Ryder is notorious for this. I one. love he dining loves out. This subject. I can't. He, loves dining he out. started and itching I right when I, start, I when, I, when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I will say um, I want to be particular about where I dine out. And uh, now if I'm traveling, OK, I'm going through a fast food restaurant. I'm just on my way. But I want it to be an experience. I want it to be something I can enjoy. I love dining out with friends. Uh, so that's a fun thing. Mm-hmm. We in the office, we make dining out a weekly 
um, ritual, you know. Uh, so Tuesdays you will find us out in a restaurant somewhere because that's important to us to spend yeah. that time. And um, I also like to dine at local places rather than chains, mm-hmm. but that's just my personal preference. Mm-hmm. Um, and choosing something that's a little different and that feels nice But um, that's just one of the things that I want to make sure I carve out space in my budget to do that because that's important to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's if it's important to you, again, if you truly love dining out and get pleasure beyond just, oh, that was a good meal. Mm -hmm. Um, But there can be so many times when you you're eating out maybe you're stopping at fast food maybe a little more than you you want to and you're just like i mean i just could have done that myself i, I could have prepared a lunch yeah. oh, so there wasn't anything special about that meal so yeah. think about those meals you know are they special um you know nancy mentioned eating at local restaurants like it that's part of the getting a unique experience out of it uh, that you like i went and got um gumbo and chicken on a stick from a restaurant that was located inside a car wash the other day uh that's a unique experience right there <laughs> so, yeah 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 you know uh is it so again you can still think do i value this is it is it the the dining out or or was I just hungry? Or could it be that I am lazy or pressed for time and don't have time to be able to prepare a meal? Well, I'm not gonna say anybody's lazy. So or... sometimes I'm paying a convenience fee for them to cook it for me. Right. Yeah. No matter what the mm-hmm. meal is, more than likely, I think for for some, I guess. But yeah, that's a that's a big one. Everybody has a dining out issue. But if you want to get on the in on the conversation, you can still join in. You can send an email to money at mpbonline.org. You're listening to Money Talks on MPB Think Radio. Dr. Nancy, I want you to know something. We got a text message from an old friend of ours named Jason, and Jason said he was trying to imagine Ryder at half an inch. <laughs> a little bit taller than that. He is, but he was trying to imagine. So this is what I thought. If if New Perspectives made a mini fig rider um, yeah. that y'all could give out and have the logo and everything on it, and it would be like, what would rider do? Well, it needs to have like a little ring at the back of his neck so you can pull it and there'll be a, a settings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he'll, don't you think? yeah, you could it talk to you. Yeah, a little button or something that you and he'd be like, "Don't buy that cup of coffee." No, I, <laughs> no, no. He would, he would say, "Do you like coffee? <laughs> it's okay." Do you love the coffee? Yeah. If not, put the coffee down. <laughs> no, he'd be talking about Roth account. <laughs> be what? like that lady that talks about spark and joy. Does this spark joy? This is Spark Joy. Do you, do you value your coffee or your Roth IRA more? Yep, yep. Hey, I, look, plenty of days, plenty of days. I, it's the coffee. I but think, as long as as long as you make the time, as long as you've got that savings going on, I'm gonna be happy for you. You can put that clip right in that mini fi- mini figure. Go for it, <laughs> Nancy. For I it. need one, and I think it would help me with my finances. Help me keep my finances together. Uh, I, I cannot wait right for the now. next. It's gonna have. It's gonna <laughs> wear a little puffy vest. Yeah. Hey, yeah. it's turned really hot here. I'm not wearing that today, Nancy. That's right. old. That's right. old news. You got to wait till I don't know October, November. When does it get cold again? I don't. You know, next shirt. January. It's yes. got outfits. Blue dress pants. Yeah, it's got yeah. outfits. I mean, you can switch them out for the seasons. No, he never switches out. Oh, okay. No. Same thing. No, I don't have outfits. I have outfit. <laughs> that's what I know. Ace. And you know, I think about you, Ryder. I never, yeah, Jermaine, I'm, have you ever I'm, seen me wearing anything other than Na- what I'm wearing today? D- Nancy, I'm never on the show, but I always, I don't know why I think about Ryder so much and I'm never <laughs> on the show, but I always think Ryder's only got like four pairs of pants and like four shirts. And he, re- you know, he goes through those she on the daily. I have four <laughs> pairs of pants. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> I ran into Ryder one time at a coffee shop. We ran into each other and he was not wearing his uh, typical Outfit. I didn't know if I recognized him at first. Well, it was the weekend, so I probably had a, just a T-shirt he on has, instead. Yeah, he has a weekend outfit that is just a, but it's like a, a, a T-shirt. I won't call it white because you know it's, four it's jeans, past white, four tees. Jeans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> love it. That's my imagining of Ryder. Can we and, put him on a keychain? <laughs> and not just I can just imagine him being like, "No, we ain't going to get the baby that today. The baby can't have that today." <laughs> baby, baby needs a 529. Baby doesn't need that. 
<laughs> well, listen, we got a couple of minutes. If you've got a question or if you just want to get tickled about just spending your own money, send an email to money at mpbonline.org. We've got to mass produce those little writers. I cannot wait for the next drive time <laughs> giveaways. <laughs> It's gonna be it's gonna be great. We're getting them done, Ryder. Nancy, I want to get back into some more useless spending talk when it comes down to maybe things like what's coming up next: excessive heat and air conditioning. You know, air is a big thing in the summer. Oh yeah, so. yeah. And you want to stay cool, um, but uh, one of the main things that we do at my house is we have a thermostat that we program mm-hmm. and also that thermostat knows when we are not at the house mm-hmm. and so we can go into um, a lower mode and not use as much energy mm-hmm. and um, also um, in the winter time we set it so that it bumps down at night because I like to sleep where it's a little bit cooler most people do better yeah. in a cooler temperature So having a programmable thermostat is one of the best things that you can do. And when we got ours, there were some um, things available through Entergy and through the gas company that allowed us to basically get it for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that one kind of always surprises me. I I have a programmable thermostat. I've kind of always had programmable thermostats, but yeah. it always kind of surprises me when that's thrown out as a recommendation. But so many people don't have programmable, th- yeah. programmable thermostats. And it's, it's, there are, to, just to make it complicated for people, there's like a, let's see, I just searched uh, for programmable thermostats on a, on a major, um, uh, home improvement mm-hmm. store, and and there's uh, over a hundred programmable thermostats that they have. Yeah, um, they range from twenty, thirty dollars to a couple hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, Nancy mentioned the utilities doing some rebates. A, another great thing, especially useful for older homes, is a lot of utilities will do some sort of energy audit of your home. Um, I know that uh, my electric provider, they do an energy audit that they will give you um, energy efficient LED or fluorescent light yeah, bulbs. Yeah. They will, mm-hmm. uh, some of it is just they'll make recommendations like a programmable thermostat. Uh-huh. Uh, they, you know, kind of recommendations, you know, what's your schedule and what sort of temperature should you have it at? Uh, some you can, I, I don't, some programs will even do things like study, look for air leaks in your house yeah. um, and help you weather strip windows and doors. Again, for older homes, that's super important. I live in a pretty drafty mm-hmm. house that uh, is always seems to be a, a pretty close temperature to whatever's going on outside. Yeah. So uh, that would be super useful for 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 that. Um, lots of different things on the uh, energy saving front because that's it's a regular thing that we need but and you don't have to do something every day like avoid a cup of coffee mm-hmm. but it's something that you should spend a little bit of time it is worth spending a little bit of time to make sure you're getting the best out of that money you're spending right right now nancy little final pin in everything subscription services this is the new bane of existence for everybody i mean oh it is I'm, yeah. I, I I I have to write it down just to tell you know all of what I've subscribed to. But how can you help cut some of that back? And that's a tough one because now what we're subscribing to is something online. It's not something mm-hmm. typically showing up in your mailbox, and it may be just a few dollars a month. So you think, well, it's just a few dollars a month, but those things add up. And so on a regular basis, maybe it's just once a year. Go back, look at your bank statements, look at your credit card statements, look at your PayPal account, and see where you're spending money on things, those few dollars a month that are going out that you are not using. Yeah. For At my house, it's the streaming services because it just adds up. We think there's this great program and we've got to watch it, and we're going to sign up for some um, trial period, and then it rolls over, and here we go. Mm -hmm. Um, Those things add up, especially when we start to see some of those subscription services start out at a small amount, and then they will gradually increase what they're charging you, and it's on an automatic 
either automatic draft or automatic charge on your credit card. So watch mm-hmm. out for those. Mm-hmm. Layman's tip that I have for subscription services, always put it on a prepaid card. That way, when your 30 <laughs> days runs up and you don't That's want it anymore, yeah. you, you don't have to commit. <laughs> There we go. I've got tricks for everything. I've got tricks for it all. Well, Money Talks is a production of MPB Think Radio and is funded in part by the generous financial support of our listeners. To hear today's show or previous shows, visit moneytalks.mpbonline.org or listen to our podcast. Search for Money Talks. Dr. Nancy Ryder, I've had a great time with you both. For Dr. Nancy Lotridge Anderson and Ryder Taft, I'm Jermaine Flood. Join us every Tuesday at 9 a.m. for Money Talks on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.